You're disrupting the proceedings. Venus, set me free. Set me free. Set me free. Okay, she's not gonna set me free. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is the first video that I'm posting. Uh, I'm <sighs> terrified. I have been putting this off. I have been putting this off for so long. I've been starting a YouTube channel for like over a year. Is it dog? I do it. Think this is weird. We do it. Oh, you're so cute. Are you like, what are you doing? What's going on, huh? What is this? Pay attention to Vini instead. Oh, you're very cute and sweet. Okay, I'm not gonna pay attention to that. I've been on Tumblr for years since I discovered Wicca, and that's always kind of been my safe space. That's always been where I share my spirituality and where I talk to other spiritual people and other Wiccans and other pagans. I've always felt safe on Tumblr. That's where I grew from a little baby Wiccan to a full-blown Wiccan. Um, that's where I learned a lot. That's where I met a lot of people that taught me a lot. And that's where I really found my community to the point where my Tumblr blog grew to be huge. So thank you to anyone that came here from Tumblr. I am so, so grateful for you. I am grateful that you look at my blog and that you like my blog and that you bother me to make a YouTube channel. Yeah, your support and your community just means so much to me. So thank you so much for that. And thank you so much for coming to watch this video. I get asked constantly about Wicca. What is Wicca? How do I become Wiccan? Where do I start if I'm interested in Wicca? Um, so basically that's what this series of videos is going to be. I'll be releasing a new episode of the series every week, probably around the end of the week, Thursday or Friday is when I'll be posting them. And they're gonna be all about Wicca. It's gonna be kind of a Wicca 101. So this first video is just gonna be all about the basics of Wicca. What is Wicca? Where does Wicca come from? What do Wiccans believe? What is paganism? So like I said, I've been getting asked to make videos about Wicca for so long. And I've always wanted to. I've always really felt like there aren't really any great resources in terms of starting out as a Wiccan unless you already know someone who's Wiccan and you can ask them directly. Um, it's kind of a confusing religion um, and it's kind of cloaked in secrecy. Kind of a fundamental part of Wicca is not shouting it from the rooftops. Wiccans don't believe that their religion is for everyone. So I always felt very comfortable kind of just having my Wicca practice and not really sharing too much beyond my Tumblr blog. And the other thing that made me feel safe about Tumblr that makes me feel less safe about this, it's a little different because I'm talking to you directly. Like this is obviously me. It's like I really have to come out of the broom closet fully. And I struggled with coming out of the broom closet to begin with even a little. Um, and then I've slowly become more and more comfortable owning my religion and my spirituality, but that's still a work in progress, honestly. So to me, it felt so, and still does, just so daunting and vulnerable to sit down with a camera and record myself talking about my religion and my spirituality and my practice. So I kind of decided that even if it scares me, I'm still going to do this. I'm still going to share this information. I'm still going to make these videos. So that is ultimately why I decided to do this. I think it would help a lot of people. And I think there's so much misinformation out there and so much confusion that I was like, okay, even though I'm terrified, I'm gonna do it for y'all. So I really hope it doesn't let you down and that you learn what you came here to learn and I hope that this video helps you decide whether Wicca is right for you and that you'll continue going on this journey with me. So all that being said, just to introduce myself, I am a Wiccan witch. Um, so I identify as Wiccan and as a witch. Um, they are different things. They are separate things. We will discuss that though. So I'm a Wiccan witch. 
I'm an attuned Reiki practitioner, and I'm a certified Akashic Records practitioner. I just wanted to tell you guys that so you guys know who I am and why I'm here. So if you don't know what Reiki is, if you don't know what the Akashic Records are, don't worry, we're going to get to those in future videos. We're going to explain all these things. It's just gonna take a lot of time, but one thing at a time. We don't wanna get overwhelmed. There's a lot to learn about Wicca, and there's a lot to learn about spirituality in general. Um, and paganism in general. It's very easy to get super excited and just kind of go at a million miles an hour and buy everything at once and just completely wig out on all the fun witchy stuff, which I mean, we've all done, definitely guilty of doing that from time to time. When you're first starting out, it's so essential to kind of slow your roll a little bit. Um, so let's just focus on what we're focusing on right now and we'll get to all the crazy stuff that we have to get to in future videos, including Reiki and Akashic Records. Okay, let's get started. Let's get right into what is Wicca. So Wicca is a nature-based religion. And Wicca is kind of rooted in this belief of the duality of deity. So basically, what that means is instead of like many religions where there's just a god, there's a god and a goddess. So that's the duality of deity. They're partners, they're two halves to a whole. And then relating that back to how Wicca is a nature-based religion, a lot of Wiccans, including myself, will see the sun as representing god and the moon as representing goddess. So that's kind of where those two things connect. So Wicca is a pagan religion. So what does pagan mean? What is paganism? If a religion is pagan, then it's basically any religion that is pre-Christianity or any kind of non-Orthodox religion. So that kind of brings us into the origins of Wicca. So where does Wicca come from? How did Wicca get here? How did we come to know Wicca as what it is today? So Wicca has roots in the Neolithic period. So pre-Christianity, and I say that Wicca has roots in the Neolithic period and doesn't just come from the Neolithic period because the religions that were being practiced during this Neolithic time were not called Wicca. Archaeologists kind of just call the religions that were being practiced then during that Neolithic period goddess-based religions. So these Neolithic time goddess-based religions that were being practiced have fed into Wicca in that they're nature-based, Goddess is super important. The cycles of the earth are super important in terms of the moon and the sun. That's kind of where Wicca gets its base, its foundation, its roots. So the label Wicca started to come into being around the European Middle Ages. That's when people started labeling and separating like you're Christian or you're pagan. Um, you believe in the Christian God or you're kind of following the old ways as um, it's often called. A lot of the time it was, you know, the people in the cities were kind of converting to Christianity um, and starting to believe in the Christian God, whereas the people that were more on the countryside a lot of the time were much more solid in their pagan ways um, and they didn't have as much influence coming into them because they didn't live in a city setting. There's these other people that are practicing pagan traditions that are practicing the old ways. And then there are people who are converting to this newer religion. And then in the 1900s, there became this kind of resurgence of the divine feminine. So those are the origins of Wicca, the history of Wicca, very, very briefly. So talking more about Wiccans and what they believe. So you understand what Wicca is, the basic understanding of what Wicca is, that it's a nature-based religion with a god and a goddess, and it's all about celebrating the earth and the cycles of the earth, the cycles of the moon, the cycles of the sun. But what do Wiccans live by? So within Wicca, there's something called the Wiccan Read. So the Wiccan Read is a short phrase the word read really means um, to give counsel or advice. So basically the Wiccan read is just something to live by. Um, it's a piece of advice to live by. So the Wiccan read is, and you harm none, do what you will. 
So everybody interprets that, you know, a little bit differently. But for me, what that means is don't harm yourself, don't harm others, don't harm the earth, don't harm animals, just do as little harm as you can. Try to live your life in a way that's as in harmony with everything else around you as possible. That for me does mean that I am vegan. And that is partially a spiritual choice um, because of the Wiccan read. So that's how I interpret the Wiccan read, but again, everyone interprets it their own way. Um, and I know some Wiccans that interpret the Wiccan read to simply just mean that within your Wicca practice, don't do anything that's going to harm anyone. Some people just end it there. That's what the Wiccan read means to them. But for me, I want to do the least harm possible to myself, to others, to animals, to the earth. So that's how I interpret it and that's how I live it. But again, interpret it however you interpret it. So that's the Wiccan read, and that's kind of really the only concrete rule or precept or guideline within Wicca. So relating to the Wiccan read, there's something within Wicca called the threefold law. So basically that just means that Wiccans believe that whatever you put out, whether it be through action or through words or even through thought, um, will come back around to you with three times the strength. Which is also kind of the point of the Wiccan read in that, you know, do what you will, but harm none. Because it will, whatever you do will come back at you with that much more strength. So that's where the Wiccan read and the threefold law of Wicca connect. So I don't want to focus too much on talking about the crazy stereotypes and misinformation about Wicca, but there is one thing that I am going to address, and that's the concept of evil in Wicca, or the concept of the devil in Wicca. So, nowhere in Wiccan books, or from Wiccans, or in any of your Wiccan study or practice will you hear, see, experience, or anything like that have anything to do with the devil. Wiccans don't believe in the devil. Wiccans don't really believe in evil. So nowhere in Wiccan books or anything Wicca related will you see the mention of the devil or the mention of hell or the mention of evil. That's kind of a Christian creation. So when people like stigmatize Wiccans or witches as being evil, that's just ridiculous. Um, I, because I don't, it's, it's the exact opposite. So if anybody ever says that to you, or if that's misinformation that you've been fed that you thought was true, it's not true at all. There, there is no greater pet peeve that I have other than when people try to act like I'm scary because I'm Wiccan. So next point, within Wicca, you can be either a solitary practitioner or you can be part of a coven. I am a solitary practitioner, so I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about this simply because I don't know much about coven Wicca. I've done spiritual stuff with friends, I've done magical workings with a group, but I've never been a part of a coven. I've always been a solitary practitioner. Um, but I did want to let you all know that that is a possibility in case there's someone watching this video that is interested in being in a coven. You can um, try to find covens in your neighborhood, in your area. I don't really have a good resource for that because it's not my world. If someone does though, please comment down below with the information so other people can find that. So it's basically just up to you um, knowing yourself and what you want and how you work best um, and where you feel safest. Um, and what you would prefer. Because I, I definitely prefer to be a solitary practitioner. I like kind of doing my own thing. But um, some people feel the opposite. Some people like the comfort of a group. Some people like the support of a group. So it's all just personal preference. Um, would you rather work in a group or would you rather work on your own? And then also within that, you can choose what kind of Wiccan you wanna be. Um, I know people who are more on the traditional side of Wicca that follow a specific model of Wicca.
I am much more of an eclectic Wiccan, um, which basically just means I'll just kind of take bits and pieces from things that I read and people that I speak to and classes that I take and then mush them all together into my personal form of Wicca. And that's what feels right for me. I don't like rules. So I like to just kind of smush everything together and then figure out how it works and see what feels right and what I want to leave behind and what I want to build on. So yeah, these are all just like choices that you get to make for yourself and you can definitely start making those choices by studying. One thing about Wicca that I think it's important to know is you will never stop studying. So when you first start out, I recommend doing a lot of studying just from the jump before you start practicing. I first heard of Wicca when I was 16 and then I actively started studying Wicca when I was almost 17. I just basically studied until I felt ready to practice. But I definitely would recommend spending at least a few months, like minimum, just studying without practicing. Quick disclaimer about your studying. Don't just study anywhere or from anything. You know, don't go somewhere where you feel like you're not getting good, reliable information. And double check your information. If you're not sure if something's correct, then look for another source. Just do a lot of fact checking. Don't just assume that everyone knows what they're talking about because a lot of people don't. <laughs> and nobody's perfect, so everybody makes mistakes, you know? So when you're reading things, whether it's online or in books, or if you're watching other YouTube videos or anything like that, do your research and make sure that the information you're getting is correct, especially on the internet. Don't just go on the internet and kind of like Google stuff and then like pull up the Wikipedia page. Like, please no Wikipedia, not to like be your annoying high school teacher when you were writing essays and be like, no Wikipedia, but no Wikipedia. Check your resources. Don't rely too heavily on the internet. Focus mainly on books, books from authors that are legit and you should be okay and keep watching my videos. I won't steer you wrong. I'll protect you. I, I got you. I'm not gonna abandon you on your little spiritual journey. At the end of each one of these videos, I'm gonna give you a little bit of, I don't wanna say homework simply because I hated school, but um, if you like saying homework, then you can say homework, but I'm gonna call it self-work. At the end of each video, I'm gonna give you a little bit of self-work to do until the next video um, and continuing past the next video. So this week, your self-work is going to be these two books that I've got right here. So this first book is by Scott Cunningham. It's called Wicca. And then the second book of Scott Cunningham's that I'm recommending is Living Wicca. So they're both by Scott Cunningham and it won't look like this. When you buy these two books, it will not look like this. This is a book that I found when I was 17, when I was first discovering Wicca. Um, I found it at a used bookstore and I was just kind of wandering around and then I found the metaphysical spiritual area. Um, and I was like, <laughs> so I started wandering around that area and I found this one and I had been wanting to get this Scott Cunningham book, the first one, Wicca. This is Scott Cunningham's three most essential books on Wicca in one book. So when you buy this book, it will not look like this. Um, I'll put right here what the cover will look like um, so you know what you're looking for um, for both books. So the first book is Wicca by Scott Cunningham and then the second book is Living Wicca by Scott Cunningham. And so these two are an incredible resource for getting the basic information about Wicca. Pretty much anything by Scott Cunningham is a great book. Scott Cunningham is super reliable. He knows what he's talking about in terms of Wicca. He's just a really great resource overall. And his books are very easy to read. They're not confusing. So definitely pick these two up. These two are the books to read if you're just starting out in Wicca. I always tell people that. These two books are exactly what they say they are. So Wicca, the first book that you should read, is the basic information about Wicca, the tools that you need, setting up an altar, the Wiccan holidays, things like that, the very basic beliefs of Wicca. And then the second book by Scott Cunningham, Living Wicca, is exactly what it says. It's about more living as a Wiccan. So it's about the rituals and the prayers and all that more day-to-day -day stuff that you need to know if you're gonna practice being Wiccan. I think for this week, that's about it. If you liked this video, please like it and subscribe. I'm going to be posting new videos every single week. We're gonna explore 
every avenue of Wicca. We're gonna explore magic, we're gonna explore the holidays, we're gonna explore all kinds of stuff. So please stick around and I'm so excited to share it with you all and to hear you all ask your questions and share your experiences. All that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. I am so grateful that you even clicked this and came here. I hope that it didn't disappoint. There are a lot of exciting things coming up. I've got a huge list of videos I'm going to make. I'll leave the links below to all of my social media accounts, my Tumblr blog, my Instagram, my Twitter. And so yeah, thank you so much and I'll see you next week.